as promised, I have a very, very special video for you um, on a special technique that I feel this is one of the most important things in order to get right uh, for a successful classical still life painting. And it's something that is oftentimes overlooked and it can also be something that can be difficult to get right or to um, get controlled in your studio, uh, depending on where, what you have available to work in. So, uh, and that is, what is this? <laughs> what is this special technique? The special technique is how you light your still life. This is so incredibly important that you get the angle um, and that you get the, the right type of light, lighting in order to make it most effective to develop the form um, and to create that illusion of three-dimensionality and also get that um, appearance of contrast in real life in your painting um, so that that will come out on, on your painting. So. Um, a problem a lot of times is that um, people don't know how to light their still lifes or they just set something up in their room and they've got maybe, you know, I don't know, I've been in classrooms where we have rows and rows and rows of fluorescent lights and even with the spotlight, we're still getting a lot of those fluorescent lights um, affecting the still life as well. So you want to have one dominant light source, that's here. <laughs> and you want it to be illuminating three quarters of the form. So you want the light source to be uh, up above your objects and somewhat to the side of your objects. So not totally to the front of your objects because if it's front lit, you're not going to have any form shadow. So let's get in a little bit closer here to um, show you what I mean. Okay, so moving in a little bit closer, um, what you can see here is a very uh, distinct highlight on the object and a very distinct uh, form shadow on the object. So you're gonna get a beautiful form shadow that'll be on the right hand side curving under down here. You get this beautiful contrast between light on the background and shadow edge here. Um, we get one distinct, you can tell by the cast shadow, you get one distinct cast shadow coming out from the light source and that really also tells the viewer um, the direction of the light source. What I've seen a lot of times is that people have too many light sources coming from all directions and it really washes out the shadows uh, both the cast shadows and the form shadows and they might be getting multiple highlights and if they're dealing with different temperatures of light sources they might have a warm highlight then like a green highlight from a fluorescent um, if they have any light coming in from a, a warm south or west window they might have a warm highlight so it's really important that you stick with one singular light source and this top top side light that illuminates three about three quarters of the form is um, basically the classical way to to light something so um, it's also the classic way because it's also the easiest <laughs> the easiest thing to paint um, in order to describe uh, the form so let me kind of back this back up for you and I'll also try to take a photo of this since I know that in the video it's kind of blowing out the um, color quite a bit. So, so some other suggestions, of course, are in order to help control that light is to create for yourself a shadow box um, or a light, a light box. So these are just project boards. Um, you can get those anywhere, Michael's Hobby Lobby, Target, Walmart. Any store that sells, you know, like what um, what elementary school kids used for science projects, you can get them in different colors. So I usually get the black, and you can cut those um, to size. So as you can see, what that does, 
this blocks light from this side keeps a lot of light from bouncing into that side plane so you can see if you had your still life set up right next to like a bright white wall since I'm so pale you would see how much that would sort of blow out and change the value of the shadow can you see that so even even like a reflective white wall or a white ceiling or if you have white floors you know a lot of times that can start to bounce back into um, your still life and you lose that contrast um, so that's what these shadow boxes are really great for you know and these you can really adjust you can also cut them down the middle if you want to make a longer one you know add another piece of black board to it um, but the more you close this in the stronger more dramatic that form shadow is going to be let's say if you have like a light up above or um, a white ceiling that's just also kind of washing out some of the contrast you can take like a piece of masonite board or just buy an extra one of these and cut cut off pieces of these poster boards um, to kind of put on top and block some of that light that's bouncing back uh, into here washing out some of the contrast as well so um, and the other thing is that you want to make sure that you have a similar light source on your um, still life arrangement I'm sorry on your painting sorry I mean on your painting <laughs> um, so usually what I would do is I'll have my easel set up let's say like this and I have the panel on my easel facing facing that same light source so that I'm getting the same light source that's hitting my still life onto my panel and my uh, palette at the same time so um, do the very best that you can to get your um, studio or your environment set up so that um, nothing really takes away from this one dominant light source now the closer down, the closer to the subject you get it, like what I have right now, the more dramatic contrast you're going to get. The further away, the more sort of softer or diffused light you're going to get. If you want to make this even more contrasting, you can get it really, really close and then put tape foil around this to get an even more contrasted look. Um, if you want it softer and more diffused, you can raise it up higher, back it away from the setup some, and also you can put a clear shower curtain, uh, tape that over it if you want a softer, diffused look to the light. Um, so the traditional temperature for still life painting has long for for that has long been a cool. It looks like a cool indirect light. And so, of course, this typically comes from high north light windows. That has long been the favorite of um, traditional artists, even figurative, doing figurative work, um, what have you. So, I have north light windows um, that are high, but, you know, it's not a skylight. They're not angled. You know, a lot of professional studios will have these angled. They're actually angled like this. Um, so they have specific studios that are built on purpose for that reason with windows built like that on purpose so um, I do use my top lights which I'll show you see Ta -da. I do use those just to um, fill the room with ambient light so that it's not too dark in here to paint um, but it's soft enough and high enough I usually close those blinds and curtains it's soft enough and light enough that it doesn't affect um, the lighting I have on this. So, um, and that's not to say that you have to only use cool light, but this is just, this is what I do. Um, so, you can find uh, light bulbs that have a cool temperature. So, what you want to look for is on the back of the box, look for the light temperature. Sorry, this is in reverse, but... Uh, on one side it'll say warm, on one side it'll say cool. You want to look to see where that is. Um, and so usually it's 5000 K and that's what tells you that it's cool. A lot of times these are called daylight, daylight bulbs. Okay. Um, 
So, and that's probably about as, as close as I can get to imitating a cool north, north light. And I have to tell you, it's really still not even as cool in temperature. This is not even as cool in temperature to my eye as just a really beautiful, you know, cool indirect north light. So um, north light was long favored because um, that's the most constant light source and it stays like the same temperature and the same amount of light all day long once the sun comes up till the sun comes down. Um, if you don't have north light windows and you want to use natural light, you could also use um, east light. I used to paint by east light, but you have to wait until the sun goes up over the roof um, and then the rest of the day the light will stay consistent. So um, that is my one special technique and without this my paintings without knowing how to do this how to light my paintings I, my paintings would not have the look that they have so it's so incredibly important to get that lighting right and um, I hope that this has been super helpful to you all and I look forward to continuing to share what I know with you and to working with you in the future. Happy painting! Bye.